Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. I hope you had a wonderful New Year's celebration. I can't believe it's a brand new year, 2020. Um, seems like years ago, that just seems so far away. And here we are in 2020. So a brand new slate, a uh, very clean slate that we can uh, reset everything in our lives. Um, everything from finances to weight loss to what we're going to sew. And um, I know I am feeling really excited about some changes that I want to make um, as far as my time uh, management and other things. Um, I'm very excited about the plans I have for this channel in this upcoming year. Um, one of the things that I want to do is to involve the um, viewers more. So I'm going to be featuring some of your makes. And um, that's something that I'm really going to encourage you to do is um, send me your makes, especially like the sew alongs. I would love to see what you do with those. But um, maybe, we'll, you know, as we have themed weeks or whatever, um, maybe you want to send me whatever cardigans you made or whatever uh, pants you made or just something that is a favorite make. So um, I do have a few that I put out the word last night and I realized it was last minute, but I did put out the word last night and two of you lovely ladies sent me um, some pictures and I'm going to share those in just a bit. And thank you to all the new subscribers to this channel. We do keep continue to grow and it's very exciting to me. So if you happen to not be subscribed to this channel, I would love for you to become part of our community. You can click the link down below and um, join in the fun because I think we're going to have a lot of fun and I would like us to become more and more of a community and not just a person talking to you. I want to know what your struggles are and what I can help you with. And believe me, you guys have helped me a few times too. So I have some of the suggestions that I've gotten um, from people have just been really top notch amazing. So thank you for that. And um, with that, I'm going to get rolling. Today, I want to talk about my top nine from 2019. Um, that's going around Instagram right now. I had Instagram do it and it was nothing like what I would say because I would say I want to talk about my top nine makes. Well, Instagram had some life things thrown in there too. Although they did uh, pick for me some really nice makes that I ended up on my list anyway. So it's nice to see the ones that were highly viewed were the ones that I treasure the most. So that's really good. And then my, t my make nine, which is nine items that I have not made in the past that I want to make this year. So um, with that, I'm going to get straight to my make my top nine from 2019. In 2019, so many things happened. I started this channel. Um, after being, you know, down and out about losing my photography business, I was spending more and more time watching YouTube videos and um, learning all kinds of things and kept thinking, you know, I could do that. You know, I, I bet I could do that. And then one day I went to the iPhone store and I said, give me the one with the best camera. And um, that's what I've been filming on my iPhone um, XS Max. And it's got a better camera than, and you know, I'm a professional photographer by trade. So for me to say that phone has an awesome camera, it really has an awesome camera. So I've been using that for video because it actually far outweighs anything that I had. Of course, I was a still photographer, not a videographer. Um, so I'm still working on some video editing skills and that sort of thing. Um, if it was photo editing, I'd have it done like that but video editing is a different animal and a very time consuming animal and I'm learning every day I'm learning so much um, it, I can't even put into words the amount that I've learned from I started the channel April 1st and no it wasn't April Fool's joke <laughs> my very first video was March makes so it's been uh, about almost 10 months and what a, an adventurous 10 months those have been I was in the beginning, hoping to get 100. And then I was hoping to get to 500. And then it was that thousand mark that you need to get to before you can monetize. And before I knew it, here I am sitting here at over 3,000 subscribers and my head is spinning. <laughs> and I don't know, um, I still don't know how it happened. It had to be a God thing. So um, anyway, um, on with my top nine. 
So I'm not going to give these in order because I could not possibly pick what was my favorite because uh, I had a lot of favorites this year. I made 111 items this year. Um, I keep track in a Trello board of all my makes. Um, I didn't do that in years past, but I did start that this year in January um, because it's fun to look back and see, um, did I make that pattern before? Yeah, I think I did. And then you can go back and look at it. And also, if you're trying to explain something to someone, you can go back and look up what the pattern was. And um, remember, I you know take little notes about adjustments I've made and that kind of thing. So um, anyway, that is a great way. If you don't know, Trello is an app for the iPhone. I think they have it on Google Play as well. And it's just a place where you can just put boards like almost like a Pinterest board but it's personal so and I love Pinterest but Pinterest is like a trap um, I kind of have a bad vibe about Pinterest because as a photographer every bride would give me their Pinterest board and of course they wanted um, to look like they were on the beach when they were in downtown Toledo <laughs> you know so you in and, and so it's Pinterest is just full of setting people up for failure and um, unrealistic expectations. So I like Pinterest, but you have to take it with a, a dose of reality. Um, but the Trello board is for me is just keeping track of my makes. And um, since it's a serious um, hobby slash job for me, um, I love being able to look back over the year. And you feel real accomplished when you do that. So if you're not doing that, I would suggest keeping track of your makes. So my first one that I want to talk about was my Athena jacket from Itch to Stitch. Um, it's a jean jacket. Um, I made it in a butterfly fabric that I found at Hobby Lobby. It's a canvas. Um, I love that jacket. I wear it. I can wear it all year round. I made it in the fall, so I haven't had a summer yet, but um, it would be great even in the summer when you go in their cold restaurants. Um, it is just so versatile and so comfortable and it fits amazing and um, I love that pattern and I will be making another of those. Um, the second one I'd like to feature is my acorn vest that I made for um, my little two-year-old uh, great niece and um, she looks adorable in it. Um, if I have a picture, I'll stick it in here. Uh, I need to get, I can maybe do it without showing her face and then, then you can still see the, the vest. Um, it's adorable. I made her a little um, dress, uh, which was a Bloomsbury from Little Lizard King. And I put that over um, that and it was so cute. That's a Love Notions acorn vest, which is the same as an Oakley vest for women, but it's for kids. And it goes from 2T all the way up. And I did make the 2T. And she's so cute. Oh, my goodness. It's the cutest little thing. <clears throat> the third one I want to feature is my Lady Grey coat. I love red. And I wanted a red spring coat forever. So I made this in the beginning of the year. And it was perfect weight for fall days and um, early spring days. And... Um, the Lady Grey pattern is from Seamwork. Well, it's a Colette pattern, but that's all part of Seamwork. And um, I got it with my Seamwork membership. And um, I did not like the sleeves on the Lady Grey. So Anise Coat, A-N-I-S-E. Um, I substituted those sleeves because they were just normal sleeves. The, the Lady Grey sleeves were kind of wide at the bottom. And I didn't really like that look. So I wanted more of a normal um, fitted sleeve. So um, I did that. That's the only hack I made to that. It fits wonderfully. I love wearing it. Every time I wear it, somebody said, oh, what a pretty red coat. And then when I show them my cherries on the inside, they love it even more. And that's my secret fun is the cherries on the inside. You know that um, artist, Mary Inglebright, who has all the cute little things, and she always has um, uh cherries and polka dots and um that's what it reminded me of i love her and so um that fabric just was had me all over it um the fourth one um and again these are in no particular order it's another love notions pattern is the presto tunic so the presto tunic is a collaboration that i did with karina from lifting pins and needles 
And um, when she first suggested that pattern to me, it really wasn't on my radar as one I thought I would ever make. Um, but after I made it, oh my goodness, the fit is fantastic. I love that top. And again, every time I wear it, I get a comment about how much people like it. So it's definitely one of my favorite makes. And that fabric was from my favorite outlet um, in San Antonio, which I bought in the spring. Um, the fifth one that I want to um, share with you was my Closet Case Christmas Jammies, um, the Carolyn uh, Christmas Jammies. That was a Minerva blog make, and um, it was little uh, Christmas lights all over. I love those jammies. I will still continue to be wearing those even though it's January, and um, I love them. I love them because they're short-sleeved, and they fit well and they're very comfortable. Um, the reason I like short sleeves is because I'm that age and I get little personal summers and I need to be able to um, not have anything on my arms at night. I can cover up with a blanket, but I can't take long sleeves off. So um, I don't wear long sleeves to bed, I just don't. <laughs> so um, try to find Christmas jammies in the store without long sleeves. I guarantee you, you won't find them. <laughs> Unless maybe in Florida or someplace like that, but certainly not in Ohio. And um, so I was able to make those to my liking, which was really nice. And my really favorite, um, oh man, if there's a contender for number one, it would be this one. I made a Melody Dolman. I had a piece of Beatles fabric that um, was directional and I only had a half a yard. So I ended up doing just half of the front of a shirt in this Beatles fabric and then using just regular navy blue fabric for the rest of the shirt. And I made this Melody Dolman. I did do a video about that one as well. Um, I love that. I, every time, again, every time I wear it, somebody says, where did you get that? And a lot of people have even looked for that fabric. I got it on Spoonflower and they don't have that fabric any longer. I had that fabric in my stash for a while, not really knowing what I was gonna do with it. First, I was going to do like a pillow for our music room. But then I just decided I really wanted to wear it. So um, it ended up a Melody Dolman. I love it. Of course, it's cold now, so I'm not wearing it as much. But I guarantee you, it's going to be right back on me in the spring. Um, it's going to be one of those garments when anytime it's clean, it gets worn. Um, those are the much loved garments. And as you know, I am a huge Beatles fan. So um, it makes me uh, happy <laughs> to wear that. It takes very little to make me happy. <laughs> anyway, um, so that was um, number six. And another, again, these are in no particular order. The next one is um, Simplicity 8753, which is the pattern that we're doing for the men's shirt so long. But I actually hacked this pattern into a Hawaiian type shirt for my husband. And it is a guitar print. And he's a guitarist. And um, it was a nice surprise for him. He loved it. Um, he wears it proudly. I was very proud of the pattern matching <laughs> in that shirt. So um, it was very difficult to do because it was the repeat was really um, far apart. I ended up having to order a little extra fabric to accommodate for that. Um, but it worked out just fine. And um, he loves it. And he'll be wearing that on our vacation. Um, a lot. He told me he wants to take that with us. Um, and he actually wore it. Um, we play in our worship band and he actually wore it to church one day and played, played guitar with it. It was kind of cute. All right. Number eight, um, is my Tessa jeans. I made some Tessa jeans. And again, I did a video on those. You can go back. I don't remember when it was, but there's a video probably August ish, maybe August, September. Um, and I did do how to fit jeans and these are the best fitting jeans I've ever owned. And I don't have an embroidery machine, um, but I just took stitches very slowly and turned things very slowly and, um, was able to embroider those butterflies on the pockets, which, um, works really nice with my butterfly jacket. And last but not least, um, I made the cutest mermaid costume for my oldest granddaughter. She wanted to be a mermaid for Halloween. She's not a child anymore. She's turning 12 in a couple weeks. And um, there were a lot of really juvenile looking um, mermaid costumes. In fact, I made one of them for 
um, my littlest granddaughter. Um, but Eve's needed to be, you know, a little more classy and older. So I found this like teenager pattern from Simplicity and I had so much fun making that. I spent probably more money than I should have on the fabric. Um, it was sparkly and um, just, it was just, it was a little bit of a difficult pattern to make, but she, her eyes, when she saw that pattern, her eyes were just like this. She loved it and um, I loved doing it for her. So um, that was just a joy to make and a joy to give. So um, those are my top nine favorite things that I made this year. And not particularly so much for the result. Some of them are for the result that you know, what I ended up with. And some of them were just for the sheer process of playing with beetles fabric and playing with shiny things and making a mermaid or, um, you know, making a red coat, you know, just fun, just fun, fun, fun. Have fun with your sewing. Um, I could have gone on forever and I could have had a top 29 <laughs> easily. So, um, so things that you love. So things that make you love the process. So things that make you love to wear. Before I move on with my um, make nine for 2020, I want to take a minute and feature some of our viewers makes that were sent to me. I put out a call yesterday on um, the community tab um, for people to send me a few of their favorite makes from um, 2019. And um, I have a few to share with you. And um, I'm very grateful to those women for being the ones to break the ice of sending them in. And I would love to feature a couple every um, every Tuesday or whenever um, beginning of the week video. I just want to share um, a couple of these great makes with you. Um, Lynn, um, and you know her on Instagram as Old Soul. She sent me three of her favorite makes. The first one is called the um, Twig and Tail Traveler Cape. And that looks really interesting. I um, I used to have something like that a long time ago. Um, capes are back. I mean, they're in style now a lot. Um, she says that um, she, this is some, these are things that she said she normally would not have thought of making, but she ended up loving them. Here she is in her York pinafore, and I think that is just adorable. It looks so good on her. Um, so that's wonderful, Lynn. And then here she is in her indigo top from Tilly and the Buttons. So I think the these are just wonderful makes. Um, she's If you follow her on Instagram, she's Old Soul with S-E-W. Um, if you follow her on Instagram, um, she is, uh, you'll get some phenomenal ideas and she's one of the nicest people. Um, I truly treasure her involvement in our channel very much. Thank you, Lynn. Her name is Lynn, but she goes by Old Soul. Um, and then there's Bridget May who sent me, um, basically she's with this picture. She's wearing two of her favorite makes from 2019. And um, she made the Sasha trousers, which I think are from Closet Case. And um, she says they're in a fine stretch needle cord. And um, she said they're a lovely color and a great fit. So that's wonderful. And then um, she said she made it after attending a trouser uh, fitting course. So that would be a great thing to do. Actually, I know quite a bit about fit, but I would love to take a trouser fitting course um, as well. So uh, kudos to her for that. Um, and then the top is from the Lark T, which is from Grain Line. And um, I love that pattern as well. And um, she says she's made um, many of those this year. So, and she looks lovely. Both ladies look very lovely. Thank you, Bridget. She goes by Bridget May on YouTube. I don't know if she's on Instagram, but um, maybe she'll let us know in the comments if she uh, wants to put her Instagram handle in there so we can all find her. And then Lynn Prentice, who is Old Soul on Instagram. Thank you so much, ladies. I really appreciate your involvement. And I appreciate each and every one of you that comment and um, support the channel. Thank you so much. 
Um, so this week, send in your makes, um, something that you just want to share or something that um, you, may, maybe something that you tackled for the first time or um, maybe just something that you gave someone for Christmas that you kind of want to show off. Please just send them. Um, I want to feature some of you people because you're awesome every week if possible. So, um, and I promise if you send them, I'll fit them all in. It might not be all in one week, but I will fit them all in eventually. Okay. All right. So now on to my top or my make nine for 2020. These are patterns that have been on my radar for some time that I really just want to tackle. So, and this is again in no particular order. The Cotto Sew Bathing Suit from Megan Nielsen. She came out with the curve version of that for um, plus size and curvy women. And I'm kind of on the verge. I could make the regular one, but I think I'll probably like the fit better of the curve one because it probably it's a little more geared to an older lady's body like mine. Um, so um, that pattern is one that I really want to make before our vacation. So the Coddle Sew Bathing Suit. And I would say that there's a few different bathing suits. So I'm going to say that I will make the Coddle Sew or maybe the Alexandria Swimsuit. Um, and um, there's a lot of nice suits out there. Um, and I might just take one and hack it in a couple different ways. I need to take at least seven bathing suits with me this year. So, um, I'll be making a lot of them <laughs> and I will share them. I'm not so sure if I'll share photos of myself in them. Maybe I will if I get brave, but, um, I know some other people have been really brave and I applaud them and I should take their lead and not be ashamed of my body and show you the bathing suits which so I'll probably talk myself into it and then cringe until I read the comments <laughs> anyway um so that's one on my make nine um and the no next one on my make nine is the Almada robe from Seamwork um it just looks like such a cute robe that you can throw over bathing suits we stay um, in a condo in Mexico with my brother and sister-in-law. So, you know, in the morning I need a robe and um, it's nice to have something that is, um, you feel luxurious in. Um, in a real silky, uh, like lilac colored fabric that I'm probably gonna use for that. And I think it'll be really nice. Um, the third one is I wanna do a mashup. Um, and I saw this Tessa on Love Notions um, on the support group. She did a mashup between the Margot Peplum and the swing of uh, the Sybil skirt swing version. And um, it looks a lot like, um, looks a lot like some of the um, LuLaRoe dresses. There's a style there that I really love called Nikki. And um, it looks, that pattern looks like it would be really super close to that. Um, if you mash those together. So it's kind of a fit and flare. Um, so I definitely want to give that a try. So that is um, on my radar also. Uh, as long as we're on the I Love Notions theme, I have the Octave Coat. My husband told me he'd gift me the um, fabric for my birthday, which was in November, and then Christmas took over and I didn't get to make it yet. Um, but I'm going to uh, do that. I'm looking for just the right wool because I um, I, I'm going to, you know, make them buy me expensive fabric since it's for my birthday, right? <laughs> no, whatever. I just, um, I'm just looking for the right fabric and, um, then I'm going to make that. Um, and then the next one is the Sonata dress, which is also a Love Notions pattern, one that I haven't made yet. Um, I, first I thought I wouldn't really, you know, I didn't really give that one a second look. And then I saw somebody make it into a maxi and I thought, I really like that. So uh, I'm probably going to make that uh, for our vacation um, in one version or another. And then I had visions of doing this for a Christmas gift and never got to do it. So I want to do an Audrey jacket because it's a more cropped version. It's like the Athena jacket from Itch to Stitch, but it isn't as long. And... Um, 
I want to do a more cropped version. And then in the back of the jean jacket, I want to do some paper piecing with different colors of denim. So I've got some plans and that just kind of fell through for Christmas, not because I didn't want to do it, but because I had to prioritize, divide and conquer, use the time that I had to get the most things done that I could. And by eliminating doing the jean jackets, um, they were going to be for my daughter and daughter-in-law. If they're watching, I'm sorry, I'll make them for you, I promise. Um, but by not doing that, I was able to get a lot more done. Um, and then um, another one is the Serenity sweater from Love Notions. Um, I'm on their ambassador team now, which is just a group of people that, you know, they um, use for pattern testing and help prom with promotion and that kind of thing. Um, so I do need to disclose when I review their patterns, please know that I, I don't speak, I, if I, if I find a problem with a pattern, I will tell you whether I am being compensated or part of a team or not, because we're all in this together. But I do need to disclose to you that when I review patterns or talk about them, that I am part of the Love Notions team now, which I am actually very excited about. Um, and then another Love Notions, because I've been looking at their patterns a lot right now because I have, you know, being on the team, I've been kind of um, uh, looking at some of the ones I haven't made yet. Well, I fell in love with the acorn vest from Christmas for my great niece, and I want to make the grown-up version. And I got some fabric. I'm going to grab that really quick. So I always say that I never win anything, and I can't say that anymore because Sur Surge Fabrics had their first cuts of their sweatshirt fleece, um, and I won. I won a yard of this wonderful sort of reddish pink and also some green, and I love it's so soft and nice. So what I want to do, I'm going to grab the green. Here's the green. What I want to do is an Oakley vest, and instead of binding, I'm going to do a little bit of a hack. I bought a reversible jacket zipper, and I want to do a reversible version of uh, the pink, pinkish red on one side and the green on the other. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about doing that. I'm not sure when I'll get that done, um, but if you, uh, this fabric is just, oh, it's a dream. It washed really nice too. Um, so I will be definitely excited to do that. And last but not least, another, like I said, I've been going through the Love Notions catalog this week, which is why all of these are on my mind. But um, I have never made um, the Allegra bottoms from Love Notions. So that's another one that um, I would like to make. So that makes nine. And there are many, many more on my list. I could go on forever, but you wouldn't want to listen to that. So <laughs> anyway, I hope that you have a wonderful day. I am um, have plans to put up uh, a Friday sewing school tomorrow and go back to the Tuesday-Friday schedule next week. Have a wonderful evening. Happy New Year. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Happy sewing.